Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to a pen review on Inkdependence.com. This is the box of the pen we're going to look at. This is a Fred Fagionato. It is a PKS. This comes to us from Papier Plume. Thank you very much to uh, Papier Plume for sending this out for review. Now the box on here is pretty unassuming, which is a thing I'm into. If you're going to give me packaging with a pen, give me something I can either pitch into the closet without feeling bad about it, or give me something I can use over and over again. They went the pitch in the closet in the way that you're not going to feel too bad about it way. Uh, this is all cardboard, nothing fancy fancy in here. The pen, nothing really underneath there. There's a little bit of room under there. You could probably put a couple of cartridges, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if they do or not. Uh, this is a tester pen that they loaned out to me. I'm going to have to send it back, uh, but it is a gorgeous pen and one that has gotten a lot of attention every time I pull it out over the last like month or some month and a half, I guess maybe, that I've had it. Uh, you can see this material is uh, not super normal. It is not boring. However, in less direct light, this has got a light right here. So lots of light. You can see it's a little bit translucent here. You can tell the section is going to be another color. Uh, and you can get all of this chatoyans and this beautiful pattern out of the cellulose acetate. This was a Conway Stewart blank is what he was using to make these. And uh, I hear that he has since kind of run out of that material. And so he's going to be using other sorts of materials. Uh, you can get these in ebonite. They cost quite a bit more and they're, they're way fancier. You can get it with gold nibs. This one comes with a steel nib that we'll see here in just a sec. Uh, but these PKS models all do look the same uh, with regard to this clip, which is one of the things that gets oohs and ahs. Is if this is in my pocket, people notice. The only branding on here, in fact, on the pen itself, here are these two Fs for Fred Fagionato. That's it. There's nothing else. The top of the, uh, the finial, unadorned. The bottom, blank. Uh, but this is a very classic sort of design. Uh, and it's also a fairly big pen. It's one that people notice for sure. Uh, my hands are pretty darn big, and this is a this is a big pen. We'll see it in, in relation to a bunch of other pens here in a sec. The other reason that people say "ooh" when they open it up is this. And this is a gorgeous orange cellulose acetate. Uh, I've, I've recently seen an entire Conway Stewart in this color, and holy smokes, is it a gorgeous pen. Uh, somebody got it on eBay while they weren't attending the DC Pen Show. Man, that was a good find. Anyway, these two materials together are especially gorgeous with this sort of black or uh, gray finish here and then the orange here. As you can see, this is a big section. That's a big one. This is a number six Bach nib. Let me get close here. There you go. There's the nib. It's just got the Bach uh, emblem on there, and it says Bach. It actually doesn't even say the size, but this is a medium, according to Renzo. There you go. So this is a number six nib, and so that means that if you don't care for this nib, you can switch it out with all kinds of other things. There are plenty of number sixes out there in the world for you to switch them out with. Now this is a Bach, and so you'll have to switch the feed and that sort of thing if you go to a Yovo, but that's no problem. Uh, you can get those from all your favorite vendors from, uh, you know, <laughs> Well, kind of everywhere, really. You can find all kinds of number sixes out there. This one writes, um, I mean, it writes just fine. It's not super inspiring because it is just a Bach nib unit, uh, but uh, it's a perfectly competent nib. This is a medium, and it writes sort of on the fine and slightly drier side of medium, I think. But uh, nonetheless, perfectly serviceable nib. It gets the job done for sure. Uh, there's small threading up here. It's very unobtrusive. And actually, if you had to grip it on the threads, which I don't know why you would with a pen this size, uh, if you grip it down here, you're going to miss those threads entirely. They're not going to bother your fingers at all. Uh, inside the cap, nothing really to see there. Just sort of a, a step change. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, the body here, the barrel, is actually very thick. Look at the walls in this guy. And as a result, you can really, f it's got a, a certain amount of heft to it. Even though this is just a cellulose acetate, it's not particularly heavy, but it really, you get some, you get some serious weight. It feels like a solid piece in your hand. It's not light at all, really. I mean, it's light because it's plastic, but it doesn't feel like a metal pen or anything. But for a plastic pen, it's really got some serious weight to it. Anyway, this pen has been an ooh for a lot of folks. Um, and the thing that it brought to mind most to me, if I'm comparing it with other pens, is this one. This is the Franklin Christoph 03. Uh, this is the Anderson Pen Special Blue color. You can only get it from them. They only have it every once in a while. So if you want this color, I don't know, stock that web page or ask them or something. But uh, these two pens actually seem a lot alike to me. Uh, 
and I thought, oh, they're pretty much exactly the same. There are a lot of key differences, I think. Uh, both of them are sort of flat top pens in the uh, just long cylindrical sort of style, uh, but the clips are very different. Actually, the 03 comes with a much different clip now. Uh, the top here on the Franklin Kristoff has their logo, and it has the you know an off-color disc in there. Uh, inside the pen, very, very different sorts of uh, sections. You can see there. Uh, and as you can also probably tell, the Fagionotto pen is much thicker at the section. So just for some statistics and that sort of thing, the uh, these are only, these are within a millimeter of each other in length. They are both right about 5.6. The Fagionato PKS is uh, 5.68, and the Franklin Christoph is about 5.6. So they are almost exactly the same, just about uh, 0.8 millimeters, like almost one. Um, Millimeters. I mean, <laughs> inches. Goodness. Uh, these are inches. 5.6 inches, not millimeters. If I said millimeters, goodness. Uh, the uh, girth of the pins is pretty darn close. Uh, there's only like a couple of millimeters separating them there. The section, however, is where it really gets different, and that is on the Fagionato, you have this section which um, sweeps, well, let me just take the cap off again, from 11.6 uh, at, millimeters at the edges to 11.8 in the middle. So, uh, that's actually it's actually pretty thick. Most of your pens, uh, your average pens are going to be between like, I don't know, eight and ten millimeters in diameter. This one, though, it's much bigger, like almost two millimeters uh, in diameter. Different. This one goes from eleven and a half to nine and a half, but it's got a much more drastic sweep to it. So if you're a person that has problems with your hands, if you have uh, I don't know, perhaps arthritis or something of that nature, the wider grip section here is going to be much more comfortable uh, and less tiring for your hands. So if you're a person that wants a, a girthier pen, this Fagionato is a good option for you. The price difference isn't actually all that extreme either. This uh, Fagionato PKS and the acetate comes in at about 200 bucks. In fact, exactly 200 bucks. Uh, the 03 comes in at 175. So they are pretty close in price. Just uh, this one's bigger. And so if you like that, or you like the the made in France thing, or you like a particular finish, this might be a way to go. So there are some differences. Let me uh, show you this here, which let me zoom out actually a little bit. So here are sort of the brute stats on this pen. Uh, I have the capped, uncapped, and posted lengths here. Capped, it is 5.68 inches. Posted, 7.1. This is a massive pen if you post it. And uh, uncapped, 5.23 inches. Uh, however, capped, or uncapped rather, and just held in the hand, it's about like this. So, plenty of clearance back here if you post it. Man, this becomes a conductor's baton. Uh, it is pretty darn big. You can post it just fine. It posts comfortably and stays there. Uh, but there's no particular reason to, I don't think, unless you just love posting long pens. It will overbalance the pen, I think. Uh, and for me, it always has. So I write with it like this. Uh, and it's been very comfortable. Even for long writing sections, because really with a section this big, it doesn't take much to hold on to it. It's also got a nice like saddle built into it, so it feels good. So, and this one I would say uh, probably write with it unposted, uh, because that's going to be the most comfortable. Okay, let's look at it next to a whole bunch of other pens. I said I'd have pictures of these on the blog, and I totally will. Just trying to get Mr. Nose's hair off of my fingers. You cannot escape that cat's hair. Uh, and there will be a couple of pens missing from those pictures because it was too late for me to compare it to the two that are closest in size. So let's uh, ignore these for a second. Here is the Fagionato right here. Next to it, of course, the Franklin Christoph 03 we were just looking at. Here we have the Pilot Custom 912, the Pilot Custom 74, the Sailor 1911 Large, the 3776 from Platinum, the 1911 Standard from Sailor, and then the Sailor Pro Gear. Probably you've got one or two of these pins or you know the size of these things, that's why I wanna use them like this. Now the two that are closest are actually these two on the end and these are both big pens. As I was measuring the section and going, wow, this is a, this is a thick section, man. Uh, I was like, what else is the, even this thick? Because almost all my pens are like 10 and a half maybe and below. Uh, and then I got to thinking, you know, I have a couple, one of them in particular, and that's this Pelican M1000 that are very close. And in fact, these two are darn near identical in terms of their uh, their stats. This one's just a, sl uh, just a touch longer because of the finial. It has a rounded finial instead of straight up flat. But otherwise, they are the same size. You uncap them, they're about the same size. The section, same girth. So uh, let's see, weight. 
Uh, the M1000 is still heavier. So if you want an M1000 size pen with less weight, uh, definitely go for the, the Faginato. Also, it should be noted the M1000 costs a lot more than the $200 Faginato. These guys are quite expensive. I mean, if you get them um, uh, overseas, if you get them in Germany right now, they're fair, they're a lot less than usual, but they're still several hundred dollars. This one's only a couple. So uh, those are very close. Also very close is this one, which is the Omos. Um, this is an Arte Italiana Milord in liquid green, and it's about the same length as well. Uh, as the other two. It does have a much um, a narrower section though, so uh, a little bit different there, but these two, almost identical. So if you want that lo that, that length uh, without the heft and without the cost, here we go. It also, of course, doesn't have the Pelican M1000 nib, which is pretty amazing. Uh, so that's the thing you're you're missing out on if you only get the Faginato. But, I mean, look at, look at the difference in those nibs. Yeah, huge. Big difference. Also, the M1000 is very uh, is very bendy, whereas the Affaginato is not. It is a standard Bach number no. six steel. As I mentioned, you can get it in gold. That does add quite a bit to the price, but you can do it. Okay, so that is uh, a whole bunch of pins lined up next to it. If you want to see them with their you know respective caps on and off and all that sort of thing, go check out the blog here, inkdependence.com. There will be all kinds of pictures there. Uh, let's go ahead and do a writing sample with this, and uh, we'll call it a day. Hold on just a sec. Okay, so here we go. We got our trusty Rhodia. This is the fancy uh, 1934 pad. I don't usually use it for these videos because it only comes in this cream color and not a nice white, so I can't use it for ink for uh, ink reviews, but it is a really nice writing paper, so I figured I'd do this writing sample on here. So this is the Fagionato. P, K, S. Uh, this is a medium. Nib. It is called uh, Black Pearl. Yeah. Now, if we even go closer, you can see that there are no uh, no gaps or anything. I don't have any problems writing quickly with this pen. Uh, it's a little bit. Uh, well, it looks like you can see, still see some of that ink shining over here. Now, this is loaded up with uh, Papier Plume's Red Beans and Rice, which is new to their New Orleans collection. I reviewed that a few weeks ago. It's a very nice sort of, well, it looks just like kidney beans, really. Reminds me of Red Beans and Rice more than anything else. Uh, as I said, this nib runs a little bit on the dry side, I think. Most box do for me. Uh, and this ink is uh, dead on medium, so it's running a little bit dry. But even so, even with like quick writing, or just even quick scribbling. There are no problems. This is a very nicely tuned nib. Uh, no problems there at all. So just write a little sentence here. I don't know. I saw somebody write my bucket is full of eels the other day and it cracked me up. So that's the thing I'm writing right now. Anyway, so this pen right here has no problems. There, are, It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. I've got nothing really bad to say about this one. Uh, except if you are looking for a small pen, this one is probably not going to be your cup of tea. If you're looking for a pen that is not going to draw any attention whatsoever, also, again, probably not your cup of tea due to this beautiful sweeping clip due to the uh, colors of the section, and also due to the other colors that this pen comes in. It comes in a variety of finishes and uh, materials. Most of them are fairly bright. There is a bright blue that is gorgeous. There's a bright orange that is, I want to say, the same as this, which is beautiful. It's that Conway Stewart material. You can get it in ebonites of various kinds. I believe there are even some that are maquillé and some that are like arushi. And those, of course, go up into like a, the $1,000 range. So uh, these come in all kinds of price points uh, down to this one, which is right about 200 bucks. Anyway, there you go. Go to Papier Plume. Papier Plume dot com. Get yourself some red beans and rice. Get yourself a Fagionato pen. Tell them I said hi, and that is it. We will uh, see y'all later on. Peace out. 
Did you find this video to be useful? Are these videos over here on the left hand side looking like a thing you'd like to see? Well to see all these things, click that subscribe button. It helps me get noticed by YouTube and all that sort of stuff. Also click Patreon and you can uh, sign up to be a patron of mine. That would be amazing. Thank you so much for all your help, my current patrons, and I will see y'all around. Oh hey, sometimes I do live stuff, so click that bell to be notified of when I'll be on. Peace out.